Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna discuss my full strategy that I use to make a full-time income trading online. And we're gonna dive into it in about 30 seconds. If you're new here and you're looking to build your portfolio or become a full-time trader in the stock market, you're gonna to wanna to subscribe. Hit that like button if you appreciate everything I'm sharing. And without further ado, let's dive into my strategy. The first step is to have a significant amount of capital invested in the stock market. And when you do so, you're able to use leverage. Now, it's a safer way of using leverage, and I'm going to describe it here. Essentially, what we're going to assume is that I have 1,300 shares of Tesla, and this equals to be 1 million US in total value. What this does is this allows me to use leverage, as in borrow from the brokerage to place more trades. And I'm gonna show you the safer way to, to actually use this leverage without being charged any interest. So if we see here on Interactive Brokers, that's what I'm using, I live in Canada. Uh, the maintenance margin is 506,000 and initial margin is 557,000 US. What this means is I can use up to 500,000 US in buying power for trades options trading. And that's what it's going to entail. The main strategy here is actually selling puts or selling calls. It's all based around selling premium. We're choosing strikes that we don't think a underlying stock will get to by a specific date. Therefore collecting premium upfront and we would only be charged interest and actually be using this buying power to buy positions if we allow the put or call to get exercised. And what this means is the position would have to move towards the strike. So I'm gonna give you some examples first. Let's say we're on the daily chart and we're looking at charge point and we see this trend on the daily chart and it looks like there's a very strong area of support just above 19. $20 is looking like a very strong area of support. So what we can do is we can say, all right, I don't think charge point will break $20 in the next two weeks. So today might be September 28th. We're going to go look at puts that expire in two weeks and we could look at the 20 strike or we could be even safer and look at the 19 strike because we can do a lot of due diligence, but I'm going to go over the strategy very quickly for you. Let's say we take a look at 19 on the chart. 19 looks very safe. When's the last time charge point ever broke 19? You would have to go all the way back to November 2020 when that was a new fresh all-time high for ChargePoint. On paper, it looks like there's a relatively good chance that ChargePoint doesn't break 19. So now what we do is we go over to Interactive Brokers, we open the Strategy Builder, and here we can type in the underline, which is ChargePoint. We see ChargePoint and we're to go out to October 15th, which expires in about two weeks. We see the 19 strike and we look at selling the put here on the right side. You collect 44 cents and what this actually means is it's 44 cents times 100 because each put contract or each call contract is 100 shares worth. So you actually get 100 times 0.44, which is going to work out to be $44. So you get $44 per contract you sell at the 19 strike. In terms of how much money it would require you, it would be 19 times 100, which is $1,900. So 44, if you actually do the math on $44 from $1,900, that works out to be just over 2%. So this is a 2% return for something that expires in two weeks. And when you click on that, it brings it up here in the strategy builder and you can take a look at the probabilities of this succeeding. When you click profile, it brings up this page and you can see exactly what will unfold. First, you're gonna see 0 0.02, which is the rate of return. So it's 2% return on your capital. Max return is $42. Max loss is gonna be 1858, because remember it requires us 1900 to buy the shares. But using my strategy, we don't actually let it get executed. So we don't even, let ourselves get to this loss. And the break even is if charge point is $18.58 by expiration, which is October 15th. Now the margin implied is 428. Remember, I was able to use 500,000 USD of margin. When I just changed the quantity of contracts from one to 1,000, just to give a very general blanket statement, what you'll see is I'm now using 430,000 USD in margin, which is near my cap. That's around the amount I would want to use. So 1,000 contracts uses up all of my buying power with having the 1,300 shares there as collateral. I'm not charged any interest on this. I collect this money upfront, which is the premium. It's 42,000 
and two dollars this gets collected up front the expri expiry is the same all i changed was the size i had 1000 x the size max loss shows 1.8 million but that would be if we allowed all 1000 contracts to be exercised so you have to manage these trades this looks like it's super scary but when you actually put on trades with smaller size you'll realize you can manage them very easily and you don't actually take anywhere near this loss. What's so great is you can take inefficiencies in the market and you can capitalize on them because the, 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 the profit probability is 77% because it's just showing how much the volatility is of charge point at the moment. And it's not taken into consideration that there is strong support areas at certain numbers. It's just going by, okay, charge point moves this much in a given day. By that, you know, basing a bunch of probabilities, there's about a 77% probability that it won't go below 19. If you can see areas on the chart to your benefit, you can go ahead and actually take trades where the, the odds are actually in your favor, even though the probabilities that are determined here are a little bit skewed. Here is how the trade plays out. Right now, if we put it on today, you would see this chart. If the stock is above $20, this dotted line is where it shows your profit. So right now, ChargePoint is trading about $21.50. So if ChargePoint goes up to $22 today, you'd already be 10K in the profit and you could close out the trade in one day and you could take 10,000 of that 43,000 of all of the premium. But what I typically do is I'll put on a trade and I'll, I'll ride it out until expiration if I can and let it expire worthless because if ChargePoint is above $19 by October 15th, this expires worthless and you collect all 43,000 and then you can put on a new trade because all of your buying power will be released. Now your buying power is locked up all the way up into this because you have to buy the 1,000 contracts times 100 shares of ChargePoint at 19 if you let it go till expiration while ChargePoint is below $19 by the end. You can go day by day. See, let's say we check about two days before expiration. You can see how it would look on your own screen for trading in terms of profitability. What you'd see is if charge point is above $20, you would collect 26 K. And if it's below, if it's 1950, you only collect 13,500. But if we show what it looks like on the day of expiration, well, now if charge points still at 1950, well, look, you collected 42,000, not the 20,000. You collected all of it. And you're thinking, how? The stock's at the same price. It's because theta decayed fully because it went actually to expiration and stayed above $19. This is the basis of the strategy I do. Now, I wouldn't put all of my buying power on one trade, but I wanted to show you how I average 2% a month, sometimes 4% a month. Like you could see in this example, this is 2% for two weeks. So I could get another 2% for another two weeks and that would total 4% for the month. So you can very quickly see with an account of 1 million US, you could collect double this. So you could be collecting anywhere from about 80,000 USD per month by using the buying power, not actually selling any shares. You're not using any of your money. This is the buying power because you're using your account as collateral. Here's how you would manage a position going against you. My rule is I will cut the loss if it drops near the major support by a specific amount because sometimes it could just drop a low support and then bounce up the next day and continue where you could get stopped out by, letting, by closing the trade just below support and then you would have actually been okay. So I manage a trade by waiting until it drops below, a little below major support. So let's say in this case, it's about 1879. That's when I would go out and close the trade. And I, and I have another strategy where I would actually roll out the trade so I could close this and roll it out to a later date. That's gonna be a topic for another video. If you'd like to know how I can recover losses if this trade does go against me, then leave it in the comments below. That's another advanced video. But I'll just tell you right now in basic terms, I will roll out the position. So I would take this, let's say $60,000 loss because it hit my stop loss and I would roll out the position. The secret here is to look at stocks that have a high implied volatility. Like if you take a look at charge point, the implied volatility is 72%. If you were to compare that to something like the S&P 500, you would see that the implied volatility is 19.3%. What this means is you would collect less premium for selling puts or selling calls. So technically speaking, you wanna choose 
stocks that have higher implied volatility while also taking consideration the technicals on the chart and also considering the fundamentals and the macroeconomics. Let's say we do the same strategy with the SPY. The SPY is trading at 434 and we don't think that it's gonna drop below 420 in the next two weeks. We could sell a put here, collect $3.64 in premium. You take a, a, a click on that, you go to a profile, and what you'll see is the return is 1%, so it's about half the return we would get with the other trade, and you would see the probability is showing about 77%, so it's relatively the same as, as the other trade, as a charge point trade. What we have to take consideration is that charge point, the strike we chose was 15% below the current stock price. Current stock price for charge point was 21.50. 15% below that would bring us to $19, just below. And this trade here we chose is the 420. That's less than 4% below the current price of the SPY. So we're choosing a strike 4% below versus 15% below, and we're collecting half the premium as opposed to double the premium on the one that is 15% below. That's what happens when implied volatility is much higher. So implied volatility is much higher on charge point, 70% as compared to about 19% on the SPY. That's where you would go with choosing stocks that have higher implied volatilities. And you can search that up. You go to Google, type in implied volatility of certain stocks or highest implied volatility. You'll see a bunch of stock names and you can start to pick and choose, look at the charts, the daily, the weekly, see the fundamentals and see areas of support. I like to choose stocks that have sold off around 50% from highs, 40% from highs, looking to bounce, they're, they're ready for a bounce. Near major support, if there's major support about 10, 20% below, I'm gonna choose a strike just below major support and that's how I can capitalize on that one or 2% every single week or 4% a month, a rate of returns with money that isn't mine. And the probabilities of these strikes actually going against you are very slim if you choose the right ones with the right combination of events. So it takes practice, but the, the, the probabilities are in your favor. You might take a loss one in 10 or two in 10, depending on how good you are with the trading. Sometimes I go on a roll and I'll, I'll do 10 trades in a row and I, there won't be any positions I'll have to manage because they go right to expiration and don't ever go near the strike. Obviously things change in a bear market. If you're in a bear market, things are trending down. That's when you wanna sell calls and that's also a topic for another video. You can sell calls to collect premium instead of selling puts to collect premium. Now, if we take a look at this same strategy on Tesla, you'll see that implied volatility is 46%. So it's a little lower than charge point, which means we would get less premium for the same kind of move. And that's okay if we are around areas of support that we trust. So as an example, I would personally choose about the, the 690 or 680 strike in the next two weeks because of the strength I see in Tesla and the chart and the strong support around $700. I personally don't believe that Tesla will go below 700, but to be safe, I could choose the 680 expiring in two weeks. I will click sell on that, take a look at the profile, and what you see is you collect 2%, so same on par with charge point, but you'll notice that 680 is about 10% below the current price. And that's because we had implied volatility spike because the VIX went up because all the indexes have sold off today. What you'll see is for selling this, the margin implied is 29,700. Return is $1,065. That gets pocketed initially. As long as Tesla stays above 680 by expiration, you keep all the money, this expires worthless and you don't have to use any of the margin. Now, what I could do is I could put on 10 times this and the margin implied would be 297,000. With my account, I could do up to 500,000 and you would just add an extra zero on top of this return. And you, I, I could be looking at receiving $10,000 upfront and putting that amount at risk, 297,000, adding the zero. As long as Tesla is above 680 by expiration, October 15th, then I keep the 10,000 US and I get my margin released and I'm able to put on more trades. Just to use a live example, if you take a look on the screen here, what you'll see is I sold puts on charge point expiring October 1st using the 20 strike. And I put that, that trade on just over a week ago. I collected 7,000 USD up front and it used up my buying power. I did not use any margin, did not have to pay for any margin. But obviously if I let charge point expire, under $20, I'd be forced to buy 100 contracts times 100 shares at 20, which equals 200,000 US worth of charge point at $20 a share. And this is how I go ahead and I put on trades every two to four weeks. And the reason why I mainly do trades every two to four weeks is because theta decays most rapidly 
from about one to 45 days. So you typically don't want to really go choose strikes much farther out than 30 days. You want to stick around to two to four weeks for the most part, but you can actually go ahead and mess around with selling put leaps. That would be a strategy for another video, but this is how I actually live off of trading income monthly. I'll sell these puts that expire every two to four weeks, collecting 2% up to 4% a month on the margin balance I'm allowed to use. And this more than covers all of my monthly expenses and actually allows me to add fuel to buy more shares of whatever stocks I want because I'm able to not only cover my expenses with this trading strategy, I'm actually also able to cover my expenses and reinvest capital. So that's gonna conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed the strategy. The whole strategy relies around selling puts in a sideways or a bull market. You can also obviously sell puts on stocks that are continuing to sell off. But like I said, you wanna choose stocks with high implied volatility. You wanna choose stocks that have sold off around 40% or so. You wanna find the major area of support and choose a strike just below it. And you wanna choose strikes that expire within anywhere from two to four weeks. Subscribe for more videos like this. I can share more strategies to grow your trading account. I'll, like I said in the previous video, this strategy works best for if, you, if your account size is 100,000 or more. And you can really live off of your trading income if your account size is over $100,000. So the main goal will be to get income up as high as you can, save as much as you can, invest as much as you can until you get that account over 100,000 and then you could potentially play with some of these strategies. You can obviously also play with some of these strategies when your account size is around $10,000 and you can still get that 2% a month. But again, that's gonna conclude the video. Give it a thumbs up if you appreciate it and I'll see you in the next one.